Hello, hello, I'm here at Glen Eagles, as you can see from the little crest on my bathrobe. Still recovering, my voice is a bit funky, but you know, I'm gonna try my best today. Let me give you a quick review of this hotel room at Glen Eagles. It's not an ad, by the way, no. Let's check out the bathroom. What is there to see in a bathroom? There's, there's a bath, there's a shower, there's a mirror. That's where all the action happens. Right, this, this review is going well. We are in Scotland. That's Scotland out there. You can't really tell, it's just a tennis court. But we're in Scotland for a Sony event. A launching of who knows what. Well, you probably know by the title, but I, I don't know in a minute. So let's see, let's get changed. Okay, ready to go. But before we start, just want to give a quick shout out to Adorama for supporting this channel. At this Sony event, we were told by Sony that Sony are doing really rather well. Plus, we got some shooting opportunities. Ready? Yep. Ah, oh, they were flinging cameras from other brands up in the air. Ooh. Yeah, hold on. And again. Ooh. Well done. That'll do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so here I am with the new Sony G Master 135mm f1.8. This one is customized. Check this out. It's got my name written on it, quite literally. New limited edition of one. It looks like just a sticker, but it's more complex than that. Don't accept any imitations. <laughs> I wasn't joking. Anyway, the lens. So in terms of the actual body, it's a pretty solid, robust thing. It's quite heavy. And on the body, we've got two customizable <laughs> AF buttons right here, aperture. And then you've got your switches here. Oh, and on the other side, we've got a D-click button for video geeks. Yay. Also ranking high on the geeky scale was this stuff about a floating focusing mechanism. Basically, this can focus really close, 70 centimeters close, which is quite close for a 135. And it should be quick too. It's pretty damn quick to focus. It seems to focus quicker than some other 135mm lenses I've used in the past, but more importantly, the images from this lens and A7R 3 combo look super slick. Details by the bucket load. So, just a quick update. Uh, the bride had a drink because the husband had gone. Now she's on the bike. She's going to disappear. Yeah. Where's the, where's the groom? He's gone. Oh, uh. shame. <laughs> okay, so now in the presentation, they mentioned a lot about beautiful bokeh. So hopefully, wide open at f1.8, this should have the goods. We got some, we got some trees in the background, which should provide for a suitable bokeh test. And this comes with some XA lens technology. Basically, it's, it just means something like extra aspherical. Oh, what a wild guess. It means extreme aspherical, actually. That was my next guess, anyway. After that, it was xylophone aspherical. It's no normal aspherical. It's extra extreme. It's extra good. Or extremely good. And no kidding, it actually is. It has a quite rare pairing of cuttingly sharp in-focus bits and gloriously blurred out-of-focus bits. I tried it with different backgrounds in an f1.8 and this G Master seemed to provide some super tasty cheesy bokeh and all, with a bit of character too. So they say that with this XA it's going to be better than normal spherical because a spherical usually it has quite harsh bokeh with a kind of hard ring around the bokeh ball. And this has nice, soft, gooey balls. Thankfully, Sony had more setups to confirm the softness of the balls. So I'm here, I'm in this amazing setup with some golden bokeh balls test. That's Mr. Golden Balls right there. So he's <laughs> gonna chuck his golden balls just all over this couple here. But don't worry, it's safe for work, all right. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm ready. Here we go, a little bit tight here, okay. but that's all good. One, two, like three. Oh! You know, I don't care about the photos, this feels nice. <laughs> I need to install one of these at home, just a, a confetti shower machine. Golden, golden <laughs> confetti. Seriously, don't diss unless you try it out. Okay. Go on, give it a go. Nah, come on, you have to really enjoy it. Jeez. 
Yes, that's much better. Oh, okay. Bit of hugging too. All right, now get a room already. Finding sharp lenses, not a problem with modern spherical lenses. Finding good bokeh, not so easy. And it's definitely something that is desirable in a good portrait lens. And this lens simply hasn't disappointed. And it's got 11 rounded aperture blades. So the balls should stay nice and round. Stays nice and round up until 5.6. Maybe 7.1 if you don't know what round balls look like. As I mentioned earlier, the bokeh has character. Wide open, it has a sort of cat's eye bokeh. Something to do with optical vignetting, the width of the lens elements, and how the light at the edges of the frame enter a certain angle. Bokeh in the center will be round. Some photo geeks don't like this cat's eye bokeh, but some of the most celebrated lenses have this look. Noctilux, Canon 50mm f1.2 L. It also makes the bokeh look kind of swirly at the edges in some images as a result, which I personally like. Oh, these are very slouchy sofas. Yep, yeah, so anyway, that's the Sony G Master. 145mm f1.8. Almost said it wrong. But what a fantastic lens it is. It's super sharp. Great portrait lens. Bokeh, fantastic. Focus is close. And it doesn't sacrifice on the size and weight. I mean, it, it doesn't have built-in IS, but that makes this lens my size this, this is not it's not too front heavy and it's not too long as well ergonomically pretty good in terms of image quality can't complain at all and finally sony wanted to talk about one more thing so here we are we've got two birds over there i don't think any of them are called glenn it'd be cool if they're called glenn maybe he's called glenn i don't even think they're eagles though so it wouldn't be good if they're called Glen. Glen Falcon doesn't make sense. But anyway, this is the 400 with an A9. Oosh. What a beast. The other bits they talked about, their AF development, they're continuing to make it cleverer, so you don't need to be. Already seen in the A6400, the A9 is going to get a firmware update to make it even better and have the always on IAF and animal IAF coming soon. Now this doesn't even have the new animal IAF as well and it's still working really well. I mean that's the great thing is that, you know, say you've bought A9, they're continuing to improve it to just make it a better camera which is great it's great for pros great for geeks too when manufacturers continue to use firmware updates not to just fix bugs but to improve current cameras this is a great way of rewarding current customers as well as getting new ones interested in a revamped camera that can be just as exciting as a new camera this is all the stuff they're adding to the a9 no, I know I've already tested the A9 out before, many moons ago, but it's, it's still impressive nonetheless, coming back to it. Oh, sorry, got a bit excited there. Sometimes, just sometimes, you use some gear and you come to the realisation that it's not just the person behind the camera that gets the shot, it's also the clever techie bits. Go. Good girl. Good girl. I don't even, don't even know if I got that. Holy crap. That's just waste level shooting. Every single shot in focus. I wasn't even looking through it and I still got it. That is intense AF, AF. Almost as intense as having a falcon thrown at your head. Yes. <laughs> what did I say at the... Okay, so that's it. Just before we go, I want to say a big thank you to Adorama for supporting this channel, my official affiliate link, sponsor, partner, person, people, company. If you fancy new gear, the affiliate links help support this channel, but no pressure. Content is here for your information and entertainment. Cheers. But thanks for watching. See you again. All right, I've, this has got to be done. I've just got to get. I've got to get showered, showered on by Mr. Golden Balls here.
Yeah.